Let's create our first statistical learning theoretic bound for infinite function classes. But this, it's just, it's just countably infinite. Okay, we'll do uncountably infinite later, but right now we're gonna do countably infinite. And the reason we're gonna do that is because it's a very, very simple extension of Occam's razor. Okay, so we're gonna recall the one-sided Huffington's inequality, which says that for any g, the probability that something is bad is less than delta. Now I chose the function in advance, g, and I chose delta in advance. So I could choose them in advance together. And in particular, I could choose delta to depend on g. No problem with that, because I chose them both before I saw the data. Okay, so I'll make delta depend on g, so I can, I can make delta a function of g, so it's now delta g, delta of g. Okay, so if I have a countably infinite loss class g, or a countably infinite function class f, then the union bound ends up looking like this, because remember, we're supposed to sum up all those probabilities, and so we're summing up all of the delta g's over there, um, right there on the right. Now, if I was even slightly smart, I would have made sure that when I assigned the delta g's, that the sum of them is finite, <laughs> okay? Because otherwise this bound would be vacuous again. I don't want that. So um, let's assume that I chose the delta g's in such a way that the sum of them is gonna be finite. And I'm gonna call that delta a again, because it's still kind of a delta, but I know I overloaded notation, sorry about that. Okay. So in any case, because I, because I did this, because I forced the sum over delta, uh, delta g's to be finite, I've actually induced a discrete probability distribution on them. Because what I can do is just normalize the delta g's by dividing by delta. And then I actually get literally a discrete probability distribution over the g's. OK, so that discrete probability distribution is called pg. Okay, so each g has like a probability associated with it. And, and I, don't, I don't really mean a probability. What I mean is that, um, that all of the PGs, when you add them up, that they, are, um, that they equal one. And I also mean that um, all of those PG values are greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so it's exactly what a discrete probability distribution is. Okay, so after doing inversion on this um, you know, equation right, uh, whoops, down there, uh, then I get that with probability at least 1 minus delta, then for all functions in the class, uh, something good happens, which is that the true risk is bounded by the empirical risk plus some stuff. Okay, so the only thing I did here was, I, well, I did two things. I did inversion, and the other thing was I just substituted delta g for delta times pg. Okay, so the log 1 over pg plus log of 1 over delta, that's exactly the same thing as log of 1 over delta g. I just, the only thing I did was just change notation, essentially. Okay, so this actually is our bound. This is actually our new version of Occam, the Occam's razor bound that applies to the countably infinite case, okay? And it's kind of funky because it depends on a strange probability distribution that you get to choose in advance, but at least it applies to the countably infinite case. Now, an interesting thing about this bound is that it's strictly more general than the Occam's razor bound that we talked about before. Because if the, the number of functions is actually finite, and if we had set all of the PGs to 1 over m, then we get back exactly to the log m term that we had before and the Occam's razor bound. Because what you get is log of 1 over PG, and it would be 1 over 1 over m, which is log of m. So you get exactly the same terms you had in the Occam's razor bound. Okay, so this is literally strictly more general. And of course, it doesn't work when any of the PGs are zero, but I don't know why you'd set any of the PGs to zero. So just don't do that if you're going to use this bound. All right, so what's coming up next is um, we're starting to look closer and closer toward the more interesting, uncountably infinite case. Thanks.